I'm DJ Dia Anantharaman, music director and radio host of Unearthly Machine at KUCR Riverside 88.3. And I'm here with Julie Shore and Jenny Shore from Sister Squares, along with Will Butler, formerly of Arcade Fire. Sister Squares recently released their collaborative album with Will titled Will Butler plus Sister Squares via Merge Records in late September. We have convened across time zones today to chat. Good afternoon, all of you. It's lovely to see you folks. <laughs> How are you all doing on this fine December afternoon? Doing all right. It's the sun is streaming in here. Mm -hmm. And we're getting it's, ready. It's winter. Out. Today is winter. So it's yeah. the big it's the big day. Oh my gosh, it's the little solstice. Day. It's the day. Oh, we're I knew I could feel we're looking up from now on out. Could feel a powerful energy today. Yes. It's a witchy, it's a witchy kind of day. Yeah. Yeah. Let's start from the beginning. I did some digging and learned that this band is largely rooted in the swirling of dance, music, and theater. I know this group has an impressively eclectic collection of backgrounds, whether it be Broadway, choreography, independent songwriting, music production, or being an arcade fire. Can you tell me a bit more about how these multidisciplinary forms of expression, as well as each member's unique background, informs your band's creative philosophy? Ooh, sure. Great question. <laughs> Yeah. Um, Jenny, do you want to take this one? Yeah, I'll go first. Um, it's funny because I actually talked to some of my dance friends about this because I my background is in dance and choreography. And I stepped back from dancing and choreographing when I had kids. And I didn't know if I would ever get back to performing again. Um, but it's been really interesting performing in a band because it turns out I kind of relate to it in the same way. And um, my experience on stage is really connected to movement. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, I, and I'm fulfilled in the same way that I experience as a dancer. And so I think my background is, is obviously informing my contributions to the band. And I'm always very aware of everyone else's bodies on stage, what kind of like shapes we're making, mm -hmm. um, feeling connected, especially to Sarah and Julie, because we move together a lot on stage and do have theatrical moments together. And just like when I move away from the keyboard, when I come to the keyboard, the spaces when I can dance um, and how, um, how I can dance while I'm playing because music was always like the biggest connector of dance for me um, to dance for me. And like my, that was always the most fulfilling way for me to dance was when I was feeling music. So, mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that, um, that is, that really, I bring that a lot to, to the project myself. Mm -hmm. Anybody else want to chime in? It's funny, I've been really conscious lately of how um, it's not on an artistic level, but just on a technical level, mm -hmm. how much being in a band for 20 years is, I just I play this funny technical role sometimes because I'm like, I've just seen every kind of cable. <laughs> like, oh, this kind of cable plugs into this kind of thing. And so I'm like, I have we weirdly the most, the most pertinent arcade fire experience lately has just been like, Oh, I've seen a lot of different kinds of cables in my life. <laughs> mm -hmm. A lot of this album is very energetic and in my mind, very colorful. I noticed that Miles referred to it on tape as a tiny bespoke musical bloom. Can you folks tell me a bit about your band's creative process on this album, along with its emotional landscapes and how they show up through songwriting and instrumental choices? Mm -hmm. Well, it I is a very like, color. Yeah. It is a very colorful record. Um, I mean, we just finished tour, and we kind of gravitated to like just like a weird rainbow on stage. It wasn't. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like we should like dress in all these bright colors. It was like, oh, we're dressing in all these bright colors. This makes sense. Mm -hmm. right. uh, yeah, I mean, I think everyone brings their backgrounds to the project, and it's not as if we don't all entirely have radically different backgrounds. I mean, I, I know Jenny for 20 years and Jenny and Julie are sisters. And so there is yeah. like common ground between us, but it's still like, you know, I have, I, I have the way that I 
make a ham and cheese sandwich and then julie will be like well why don't we use this kind of cheese and you're like oh yeah let's use that kind of cheese in this sandwich and miles is like why don't we use this kind of bread and you're like oh yeah let's use this kind of bread and this kind of cheese in this ham sandwich and it makes it for a more it's a more three-dimensional sandwich i guess all sandwiches yeah. are pretty three-dimensional but you know what i mean <laughs> a better bite a better bite <laughs> there we go <laughs> Yeah, and I feel like this group is very open to collaboration, and it was especially fun on tour getting to kind of play with the arrangements of the songs again and make them feel fresh for live performance. Um, so I feel like we got to work a lot of that stuff out, playing the songs live and just playing off each other and incorporating the movement pieces of it and playing around with the instrumental arrangements on stage and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So that was, that was really fun. It really felt like a, like a true collaboration. Yeah. We're always workshopping. We would be in the van, like workshopping ideas for what we were, how we were going to change things up that night or make things better, make it a better bite. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All about the that like, like one example from like the making of the record it's like, so Ju Julie and her husband live a block from me and Jenny in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. And when we were making the record, Julie and her husband, had, who mixed her, her husband, Shifty, mixed the record, <laughs> mixed half of the last record also. But uh, but they had like a, a weekend in the city and they had tickets to the Rosalia concert at, um, mm -hmm. at Radio City. And then Julie got sick. And so Sam was like, oh, do you want to come to the Rosalie -ish concert? And I, which I would not have gotten tickets for. I was like, yeah, I'll go. And then it was just like so much bass. And it was like, oh, this bass really informs the record. <laughs> and it was just like, yeah. oh, Julie buying tickets to a show that she wanted to go to that I wouldn't have gone to. And then me going to it influenced how the bass sounds on this record. Like, oh, good. That's, that's how it's supposed to work. Yeah, definitely. I remember initially opening up the Will Butler plus Sister Square CD from the mail and taking some time to look at the cover art. I like the maximalist approach the art takes and how the colors sort of bleed into each other. I'd like to know more about the album art and the symbolism and what it means in relation to the album's main themes and motifs. First of all, um, the person there, there's a, a major tie in because um, the artist who did the work, his name is Marcel Dezama, mm -hmm. and he's a Canadian artist. And we have known him for a while through Canadian artist <laughs> circles, I guess, since mm -hmm. Will was in Arcade Fire, which is a Canadian band. And, mm -hmm. um, and Will and Marcel became very good friends. And um, Marcel, uh, I can't remember which came first, but at some point Marcel had this idea and is he's very inspired in his art by chess and Marcel Duchamp. And mm -hmm. apparently there is this concept in chess called sister squares. So oh, mm -hmm. it's a, a chess idea of squares on the chessboard. And there are all of these partners on the chessboard that are referred to as sister squares. Mm -hmm. And so Marcel had this idea that it'd be a really cool name for a band. Mm -hmm. And um, Julie and Sarah and I were always kind of um, fiddling around with ideas, along with Will and Miles, um, of what a side project could be. Um, and it was always kind of in the back of our mind that it could be sister squares. And so yeah. Marcel's art and sister squares have always been kind of side by side and developing together so having Marcel's art was always uh always made sense and was like um made sense in the vision but as far as the exact art of him creating that piece that was inspired by a Polaroid of us and then making his kind of his characters which are like these kind of masquerade mm -hmm. um figures in like onesies I don't know how to describe them yeah. <laughs> but um but he also does um he also does some video art with actual ballet dancers who wear costumes that are mm -hmm. of the same um in that are um like real life versions of that not just like he does paintings and drawings of those kinds of characters, but also brings them to life. And so um, 
yeah, it just, it made a lot of sense for it to be in the cover art and for us to be them, for us to inhabit those characters in the yeah. art. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that's interesting. While I was listening through the album, I noticed an eclectic mix of musical influences. I was definitely reminded a bit of Talking Heads and similarly funky synth forward dance rock throughout the album, especially on tracks like Arrow of Time. I was also reminded a bit of disco with tracks like Saturday Night and Spoken Word with I'm Standing in a Room, which was a personal favorite. Um, I can see that dance and movement and the vulnerable humanity that comes with it are clearly big parts of your sound. I'd like to know what were some of the main inspirations for this project. It could be other music, media, literature, spiritual occurrences, dance moves, etc. Anyone? Yeah, I mean, ly lyrically, like literally every day I woke up and read Emily Dickinson for like a year. <laughs> it's just like, it's like, I'm just gonna read them all. I'm gonna read every poem. Um, and so I just woke up and would sit in my room and read like she used to make these little hand handmade books of her poems like she would write all these poems then she would edit them herself and sew them into like sew the pages together and make a little book and i'd only known her i i only knew emily dickinson's poems in isolation or as like a compendium of like a thousand page pages of poems but she she made them into little albums and i was like oh i'm making an album I want to read these little Emily Dickinson albums every day. And it's just like thinking about death, thinking about bees, <laughs> thinking about transcendence, thinking about the forest, thinking about springtime, thinking about death, thinking about transcendence. And just as kind of this endless loop of like, of, you know, of, of years of her life, of just kind of this endless loop of like, well, the bees are back again. It's springtime. I mean, like, oh, the boba link is flying, and the you know, you just get a sense of the sins, and it keeps coming back, and you keep being reminded that everything's dying, and that everything's coming back, and um, and I think that bled into a lot of the concepts on the record of just like, of just like time being being caught in time and circling back on yourself, and I think that, I think. I think at this, it, was, it didn't drive the music, but it, it fed back in the music where the music became loopier and like, mm -hmm. sometimes it repeats machine-like, sometimes it repeats very humanly, sometimes it repeats like a broken machine, sometimes it repeats like a broken human. And that that, that idea of just returning and returning and returning was, was a big one, I think. Variations on a theme, perhaps. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm interested in learning about the choice to include a Chopin nocturne on the closing track of the album, The Window. I remember sitting in my music director office, listening to the album and hearing that part at the end and being very pleasantly surprised. I personally really liked that piece and would love to know why it particularly stood out to you all to the point of including it in your album. Well, that has always been one of my favorite nocturnes and my favorite pieces of music and I I love playing the Chopin nocturnes and Will was playing around with his piano in the basement which was super out of tune and mm -hmm. I came over and we were just playing around with it and putting it on the tape is that right Will we recorded mm -hmm. it on the tape um just to like see what would what would come out of it and so it was like slowed down and we made it sound like really spooky and mm -hmm. kind of um like a little bit freaky and then uncanny will, for sure yeah uncanny and then will took that and um and wrote the song so well if you want to share a little bit more about that yeah i mean the the piano it was the day it'd been the pandemic and so it had like nobody in my house for however long so that the piano was like an exact pandemic's worth out of tune and i was like I feel like we should do something with an exact pandemic's worth out of tune piano before I tune it. So it was the day before the piano tuner came and I was like, Julie, let's just play all your favorite things and let's let's do you know, there was, she played a bunch of a bunch of stuff and that was the one where I was like, Oh yeah, this one is very emotional. I'm also interested in the music videos you guys released for this album. I noticed that a handful of them feature a lot of vibrant colors and candid footage. Can you guys tell me a bit more about the choices to include these things in your music videos and how they function 
in tandem with the album's themes. I think we wanted to highlight the dance aspect and just like, I think that was the core of it, where it was like, let's get in a room and dance. And then like, what is this? Just like on a visual rhyming level, like what, what relates to this? Like where, where does the eye go? Like how do you, how do you piece together? Like, but kind of starting with the five of us, like let's get the five of us in a room and film ourselves being ourselves and then take it from there. Yeah, I just, I think it's very like reflective of the band's natural chemistry, I think, in more ways than one. Um, I feel like the colors are just so warm and inviting that way. That was also our friend, our friend Adrian um, kind of co-directed a lot of that stuff with us and was really, you know, she was like doing the final color correct and we were, you know, we were back and forth and yeah, trying to get that saturated and trying to make it uh, emotionally correct. Mm, okay. Yeah. Uh, relating back to the thing you said about the pandemic's worth of detunement on that piano, I think it's just kind of an interesting time capsule in a way that you've used to create music. Let's talk gear. Uh, what would you say was the most essential piece of gear to the particular sound of Will Butler plus Sister Squares? That's a toughie. Mm -hmm. Was it the tape machine? Well, do you think? <laughs> I feel I like think the it was tape machine had a, had a lot to do with it. Yeah, I think the tape machine was probably the, maybe the most important bit of gear where that was, so the, Sister Squares had played, had opened for Will Butler years ago. Mm -hmm. And they had played on stage the backing track. So the backing tracks was a reel to reel. Mm -hmm. um, and then the show actually killed, killed the reel to reel. Oh. And then like, oh, I should get this fixed someday. Mm -hmm. So I took it into the shop and the guy was like, this is total garbage. So I would, like, it's not worth fixing, but I'll tell you a new one. I mean, a, mm -hmm. a new one, meaning like one from 1974 <laughs> that wasn't mm -hmm. broken. Right. And uh and it's like a real four track. I mean it's the same it's the same model that like um, I'm blanking on the massive uh uh reggae uh, dub guy who burned down a studio in Jamaica at Black Art Studio. Anyway, the same was like this it's it's just like a real tape machine. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, four track, let's do it. Um yeah. and yeah, and and the earliest bits that are on the record, like before we were making a record are, are on there, like some of the tape loops, like the drum beat to me and my friends and the piano or the window, like some of the emotional cores of the record. I mean, even like long grass, it's like the piano is sped up and tuned. It's just everything's just thrown onto the tape machine and tuned weird and then put back in a computer. Mm -hmm. um, so, so a lot of it just ran through that, ran through the, the wheels of that just to, just because it was a partly because it was a fun toy and partly because it it felt correct in some way yeah I think tape is really beautiful for recording because it has this sort of idiosyncratic saturated quality to it that I think I think adds more sentimentality to whatever you put into it yeah yeah completely and like we were, you know a song like he loop is a is a loop of Jenny and Julie and Sarah and it gets all detuned and then yeah you try to recreate it and then by trying to recreate it you get to another place and like mm -hmm. it, yeah just is, is a thing that that has a character it reminds me of destruction loops where you kind of take a blade and keep it connected to like the edge of the tape as it's running and it just gets destroyed over the course of playing it over and over yeah that's cool yeah <laughs> <laughs> lastly if you were each stranded on a desert island and could only take three pieces of gear with you what would they be and why? Three pieces of gear? Yes, each of you. So we have electricity? Oh, uh, let's let's pretend we do. <laughs> <laughs> Solar power. There we go. I love it. Mm -hmm. All right, Julie, what's your instinct? Oh gosh. I mean, out of the gear that we have, I feel like I have. I feel the most kinship with the MS-20 and I would be sad to let that go. Mm -hmm. So I would say Korg MS-20 is at the top of my list. Yeah. To be honest, in my own home studio, I don't have any analog gear. So if I could take any of that to a desert island, I'd be happy. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I would take 
Um, I can't play guitar, but I feel like I would want to have the, that, um, to access that at some point. And so I guess I would bring like a ukulele because I'd yeah. be able to learn that. And then I would bring a Mellotron because it could make any sound of any instrument, other instrument that I'm missing. And I would bring drums. That's smart. That's mm. a smart workaround. <laughs> wow. Jenny, you were check this in a very practical way. Like asking the genie for more wishes. That's the Mellotron. I guess, I guess the Mellotron could do, um, it can't do really guitar sounds. So yeah, I'll stick with the ukulele. Mm -hmm. I bet you will. <laughs> I guess I would bring... I like Julie, I feel a kinship with the MS-20. I would bring the MS-20 and I bring the tape machine to make, make some four track demos. Mm -hmm. And then I, there's a microphone I use um, that's just like a crummy 70s. It's not an SM58, it's a Bayer mm -hmm. Superstar mm -hmm. Make 2. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but is that, I'm just like so used to holding it in my hand. So a microphone, a tape machine, and MS-20. Nice. I forgot about recording capability. Yeah. So I'll make my own drum. Well, I there have we a lot to think, so <laughs> mm -hmm. I'll put it in I'll put it in my list. Oh, there we, we go. it together. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, I guess we're all stranded on the, we're gonna have to be stranded on the same island. Jenny's gonna be strumming on the beach. <laughs> We, we, use the, we, can, we need the drums, though, because we can use it to sail away. We can make a boat out of the drums. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> then we'll take the tape out of the tape machine and put, and spell out S-O-S -S on the sand. <laughs> Built in Times Square. <laughs> I'm, walking, I'm accidentally walking through Times Square. I didn't mean to Oh, God. <laughs> Oops. A, a fatal mistake. <laughs> All right. Thank you all so much for chatting with me. This has been wonderful. I feel like I've definitely gained a lot more insight into your guys' process with the new album. It's been great. Yeah, thank you. Thank all right. Thank you. you. Thanks for Have having us. Day.